Hi guys and welcome to a little follow on video for those of you who are following the progress of my Z1 Tiny 2 from Zion. Um, now those of you who are regular subscribers or have seen me on the blogs will know that I am a massive fan of the Immersion RC Zugon V2 Pro. Um, I was very lucky to have one of the earliest ones uh, made available to me for testing. Um, there are a few little kinks and problems that, that came up with some wobbles with the two axis gimbal but over the years um, or months at least I have really come to love this thing. This is my go to frame um, it's it's such a usable item it's fold down with the e300 kit from dji it gives me you know 15 plus minutes of time and as people will know what i did to get around the problems that i was suffering from with the two axis gimbal was i created and sell a um, bracket for the h3 3d from dji so that is fitted to this on the front here at the moment um, I've got this thing loaded up with way more kit than it was ever designed for, so apologies to Immersion RC. Um, I, I do love you guys, and uh, I, yeah, I love the frame especially, and the fact that it stands up to all of this with my retractable antenna and stuff like that, and still gets me 15 minutes time on a 5200 Multistar is a real testament to the frame. Anyway... Because of this, obviously a lot of people follow my work on that and a lot of people are interested in this Tiny 2. Um, the biggest problem with the Zugon V2 Pro is if you didn't want to go the DJI route or if you didn't have a NASA in it or if you didn't want to have the CAN bus, the PMU V2, um, the GCU added, every all, all the extra weight, etc. Then you really were short of options in terms of um, three axis gimbals. So this Tiny 2, because it's just got one little control module, this is it, you know, it's sat on my desk at the moment with everything you need apart from a wiring harness, um, this would be a perfect option for it. But the other problem that you have, of course, with a, um, a gimbal like this is it hangs down, um, at just like the H3 3D does here. So you do have to increase the height of the frame um, about an inch and a half for the, uh, the, the, the H3 3D on this gimbal. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to see whether or not it was possible to fit the Tiny 2 onto this frame um, whether or not I would need the anti-vibration mounts, everything like that. So as part of all of this, what I've done is I've actually got myself a spare uh, carbon fiber frame for the uh, the, the V2 Pro, the Zugon V2 Pro. Um, I didn't want to take this apart. I love this thing. This is my go-to quadcopter. I've taken it apart about 50 times over. Um, this is now it. I don't want to change it at all. I just want to use it as it is and I don't want to fiddle about with it. And having a spare frame is not a bad thing. Um, I actually got this from um, a new website that I've never been to before, which is uh, Heads in the Clouds RC, I think it's called. Apologies if that's wrong. I will put a link to it. Um, but they are the UK suppliers for immersion spare parts and the other thing that I've actually bought with it this was 27 quid for the just the carbon fiber frame and it does come with all of the um, screws and bolts and everything I also bought for 44 quid the PDB board which has an integrated easy um, UHF sorry easy OSD and everything in it so if you haven't seen the review on this um, on this frame please take a look at my review my build video everything like that it's a fantastic bit of kit but basically, for the sake of sort of 70 quid, I've now got, because I had a V1 um, arms, I've got the ability potentially of kind of giving myself a hybrid version of a second frame if I want to. Anyway, more importantly, I wanted to get this frame so I could really take a look at what options there are for fitting this Tiny 2. And to begin with, I thought immediately what I'm going to need to do is create kind of a, a second bracket similar to the H3 3D mount um, that raises it up slightly so you can have the anti-vibration. Now, you can see immediately if I put the two side by side this is without the anti-vibration mount on at the moment and it is considerably taller um, you know by at least an inch so the biggest problem with doing that is that I either have to raise the mounting bracket higher which is going to be an issue if you've got a flight cam mounted like I have here because these props just about will fit folded fully in with the camera still in place so with that it means the props are going to have to be side by side to it not a major issue but it is going to raise the height of it so i wanted to really just see what what options were available without using the bracket and i have to say i've absolutely even more so fallen in love with this little gimbal there's a bit of compromise to it but ultimately when you see this if you're a v2 pro owner or if you've thought about buying one but you haven't because of some of the jitters or the lack of the three axis gimbal then what i'm about to show you is going to really excite you 
basically the makeup of the Tiny 2 um, is a lovely neat construction. We have the control board and you can see we've got two screw holes here. Now what would be absolutely ideal is, is of course if we could actually mount it so it was kind of upside down like this. Now the uh, caveat to the method I'm going to show you means that you can't do it unfortunately. You can't have it hanging down so tilting down that would have been perfect because you could tilt down and you could see underneath you. The only method of actually currently fitting and um, you know this is subject to a bit of fiddling maybe to see whether it can be done um, but if you want to fit it inverted you have to do it like this so you will have motor in your way and unfortunately you will not have a lot of tilt down um, but it you know it should be enough so you don't get too much motor in your view and ultimately you do still have some of the other features available to you you won't have 360 degree rotation um, you know there's going to be a lot of roll it's it's compromised but you're still going to get that flat out footage which is you know what you ultimately really want so when I looked at this, I said to myself, well, wouldn't it be just lovely if I could mount this frame, this here to the bulkhead of the frame? And complete luck more than anything, would you believe it, it literally fits perfectly. And when I say perfectly, it is exactly the right dimensions. So if I hold this up, hopefully you can see that is now slid in against the bulkhead. It's got support at the top here, and indeed there's a little LED, which is kind of hard to see, that you can in fact now see through this little hole. So it fits absolutely perfectly snug up against that bulkhead. Um, and again, if you can't see on this video, I've done a full blog on this, um, on the Zugon blog, and I'll also do it on the Tiny2 blog so people can see. Um, but it really does fit perfectly neatly on there. So part of... Um, mounting this now becomes actually quite simple. It's really just a case, and I'm not going to do it fully here, I'm not going to get the drill out or anything, I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it was for people so they can kind of crack on and do it themselves if they want to. Um, but all you've got to do is you basically remove these two screws, don't be afraid to do it because it's really not going to uh, cause any major problems. So we're just going to undo these and when you put them back on I strongly advise you use a bit of Loctite. They haven't actually used Loctite for it. Now when you do that what now happens is you've now basically undone this. You'd think you could just pull the top off it, but actually, if I just pull it up very gently, boom, it's actually a fully kind of independent control module, and it just plugs into this multi-plug connector there. So you can't get it wrong, you can't twist it around by accident. And basically what those screws do, if you look, you can see my hand through those holes, all it does is it goes straight down into these two screw holes side by side. Now, um, I'll put a photo up right now, and you can see I got curious, so I removed the um, control board because I wanted to make sure that if we were going down this route, there was plenty of um, you know thread and metal if you basically, the, the idea being to extend the screws so you could just sort of drill two holes through the bulkhead and um, buy some slightly longer screws so you could just screw it down through the bulkhead onto the control board and put it all back together, which is exactly how I'm going to do it. So it is super, super simple. So now all we've got to do, I can leave that gimbal off there. Now, literally, the case is you've got to have your tiny two has got to face upside down, and then all you want to do is you've just got to line it up. And again, the perfect way of knowing that it's central is hopefully this will come out on the camera. You see through that hole there, there's nothing. In fact, I got it the wrong way. Oh, no, I haven't got it the wrong way around. There we go. So if I move that side to side, then. That's because I got it the wrong way around. So, okay, let's try that again. So what you need to do is you have the tiny two upside down, but of course we want the gimbal on the outside. Okay, and now if I do it, now if I just show you again these holes, hopefully that will focus. Go on camera. There you go. And you see there's a little LED just there, there. That's centered, basically. So that is right in the centre, and that is the blue status LED for um, the um, the gimbal. So you know it's flashing away and it's doing that. Now, all you've then got to do is basically drill two holes, and you can either leave this on as a template, or you can just measure them out. I think off the top of my head it was 26.5 gap here. But basically, um, best bet is to take the gimbal uh, bulkhead off, mark it, um, use a punch, something sharp through here, mark the two holes, drill the two holes, and then all you've got to do is get two bolts, um, 
and the exact dimensions are all going to be on the blog and everything and I'll show you how to do it once I've done the drilling you just got to push them through this um, this bracket here and that's it basically then because you've got plenty of meat on the thread it should hold the weight absolutely fine um, and you have yourself it all mounted now some of the things that I also wanted to make sure weren't going to interfere obviously you can get to all your power connections and your um, your AV and your uh, radio control output sockets so that's all fine now the USB looked a little bit worse Worrying when I first saw it because it's quite close to this nut here however taking the one that comes out of the box this is the Zion cable if I just try and plug it in you can see that even in that location there is actually no interference whatsoever so it is as if it was actually made to happen on this um, there's probably enough meat on the bone once I've done the drilling I'll, I'll demonstrate whether or not there is but the, um, the the rear bulkhead should actually have plenty of meat where you need those holes to be worst case scenario it might be a case of we're gonna have to um, come up with a, um, a 3d print version that, that will do that so that is just the easiest possible way of mounting this. Now, once that's then mounted, if I just get this back on, I don't want to put too much strain on it. You want to be very careful when you slide it back on. So once that's back on, if I just prop that up on my battery, you can see that height-wise, you're talking, that's, that's almost completely flat against it, maybe a little bit higher, but we're talking about the height of a 5200 millimeter um, battery off the ground so actually if you compare it to the um, one to the left here the completed one the standard legs which I actually sell on Shapeways um, which just boost it up about half an inch will be absolutely fine for that um, and then it's all fitted so what are the downsides to it? Well, the downsides, unfortunately, because you've got this motor, so, you know, if you compare it to the uh, the Zen Moose, then at the moment, the Zen Moose, I can pan down and look fully down. On this one, I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, I will maybe look at seeing whether or not, like the G3 Ultra, you can flip it around and do something clever with it, but I don't really want to mess this gimbal up too much at the moment. I just want to see whether this method will work. The other thing you've got to bear in mind is if you're running a V2 Pro as standard with the standard anti-vibration spheres and everything like that, there is still potentially going to be that possibility of some, some vibration and some wobble um, because of the fact that there is no anti-vibration dampening on the gimbal itself. You're mounting it fixed to the frame. So unlike the, the Zen Moose rig, that I've got here on the left that it's actually using its own anti-vibration spheres um, that that potentially could be a problem now I do intend still to look at a bracket similar to this um, so I can try it out unfortunately testing this for you guys is going to be a bit difficult because I've tried to stick fairly firm to my plan on not taking this thing apart I'm going to build potentially I'm going to build this up to be kind of a, um, a bit of a hybrid using my old v1 Zugong arms to see whether or not they fit I believe they do fit on the PDB board um, if that works fantastic um, and hopefully I'll be able to get some test footage but I'm not going to be able to test it for you for Fully on a new rig but fingers crossed you know ultimately there's no point in me doing this all for you the the key i think is that this is a great gimbal um, it's usable it's going to be usable on other platforms and if you've got a v2 pro or you're thinking of buying a v2 pro then this shows you that it is actually mountable to it um, and you've got some options for it so hopefully that will um, that will have helped you guys i thought you know i'm doing the blog i'm doing the videos please take a look at that because it'll have much more detail and it'll have further progression on it but a quick little video like this for you know 13 15 minutes whatever it is um, hopefully will inspire you to get out there try it create it and um you know, people like Ruboy FPV who came up with a fantastic little mod to the G3 Ultra to get it on there. Maybe people like him will get out there and try and tinker with this gimbal and decide to flip it upside down and, and make it work in the way that we would like it to. Or it's possible that I can try and implement Zion to um, to make a firmware that will um, that will allow that. So um, who knows? It's the, the, the possibilities, um, you know, they're, they're not endless, but there's certainly some available there. And just before we leave, Curiosity got the better of me. And just because it was such a simple job to do, you can see this is now a fully functioning Z1 Tiny 2 mounted to the front of the Zugon V2 Pro and you can see through there there are the two screw holes the only thing that I did ever so slightly different from what I was talking about there is I have actually mounted the uh, control unit ever so slightly off center so you can't actually see that LED now it's not central to it now the reason that I've done that as you'll see from the photographs in fact I'll put one up right now you can see 
So as you can see here, if um, if you do drill with it absolutely dead center, you really don't leave yourself a lot of meat on the bone um, next to one of those um, pre-existing holes that was designed for the Fairtech gimbal. So what I've done is I've left, just moved it ever so slightly off center. So you can see coming back here, you can now see that it's basically almost butting up against the, um, the plastic cover on that nut, um, but it shouldn't make a major difference. I mean, it's ever so slightly off center, but I mean, the gimbal should cope absolutely fine with it. Um, would have been nice to be central but um, because I can't actually make an, another carbon um, sort of front bulkhead I thought better not to risk it because this is an M2 the uh, the bolts in the back they're M2 bolts so they're very thin bolts but there's plenty of meat to go into there's lots of metal that it goes into um, I'll put all the dimensions everything like that like I say if you've watched this video what you should do now is go over to my blog and see exactly how I did it via the photos and obviously any feedback from people who put them together um, next stage for me like I say I'm not going to make any promises but I do have my old V1 um, arms I do have the uh, arm that's missing on there as well so I might just get they these mounted I believe Leave these do mount to the PDB of the V2 Pro so I might just throw them on there stick a few ESCs in there and do a bit of a crude kind of um, quadcopter out of that just to prove the uh, the proof of concept for it but um, like I say I'm not going to make any promises on that I don't want to spend a huge amount more time or energy on building a second one of these because I don't really need a second V2 Pro but it would be nice to test it out so um, if, if I decide to I could always take my uh, my H3 3D off my other one and I might mount the front bulkhead to it shouldn't be too complicated but famous last one Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully that's been some help to uh, you V2 Pro owners. And um, like I say, this is a cracking little gimbal, which um, I, I think is going to serve a lot of people very well on this frame.